This is Literacy Live, and I'm your host, Matt Literacy. We're giving you unfiltered access to the world of real estate, where we can cover the market trends, news, and honest answers to keep you ahead of the real estate game. Literacy Live is brought to you by Lincoln Title. Lincoln Title is the best and most efficient title company in Chicago and is the best place to close your property. Literacy Live is brought to you by Guaranteed Rate and Ben Cohen. Ben Cohen is the number one lender in Illinois and can close your loan in as fast as eight days. Today, we are discussing the NAR and the Buyer's Commission bombshell lawsuits. There's been a, uh, a lot of press in the inner industry with what's been happening with the uh, lawsuit uh, going on here. Now, people outside of real estate probably don't really know much. They've probably seen a few articles here or there, probably heard of some companies leaving certain organizations, et cetera, but they're like, I don't really know if it means anything. This is actually, uh, you know, we, we've held out on doing something on this because we didn't uh, really know if it would become that big of a thing. And now that it has and there's settlements happening, we figured it's, it's good that we cover this. So what is exactly this commission lawsuit about? Essentially, you know, group of individuals got together and said, hey, listen, we're, we're, we're mad that we got to pay commissions. And we feel like things weren't disclosed to us correctly. So they did a big lawsuit and the DOJ got involved. And in a nutshell, it came down to, you know, the government said that, uh, you know, uh, realtors weren't disclosing how people were getting paid. And they felt that there should be no reason why the seller should pay the buyer's agent. And that kind of caused this whole thing. So, you know, now we have this whole thing going on where it's like, okay, well, if the seller is not going to pay the buyer's agent anymore, who's going to pay the buyer's agent, right? Uh, and now there's this whole sort of thing, this whole snowball thing that's kind of uh, going on. And, uh, you know, anywhere settled, uh, Remax settled, everybody's settling to kind of get these uh, lawsuits off their plates and kind of move forward. But what does that mean for everybody else? What's that mean for NAR? What does that mean for the future? So we're going to knock out some questions and talk about this. You know, essentially, like the easiest way to kind of look at this is essentially when real estate agents list a property, they would have you sign a listing agreement and they would charge you a commission. Let's let's use easy numbers. I can't price fix. I'm just saying like, let's use easy numbers and say I charge you 5%. Okay. Now in my mind, right, I would say I'm going to take two and a half percent. I'm going to give out two and a half percent to the buyer's broker. Now, most listing agreements across the country actually don't break it down what you're paying the buyer's broker. It's actually up to the listing agent's company discretion to show how much you're actually paying out to the buyer's agent. Well, people got mad about this and what they did is that they kind of said like, why am I paying the buyer's agent? Why do I have to hire somebody that refuses to uh, not pay a buyer's agent? Like, why, do, why, why am I the one that's liable for this? And this is where the lawsuit came into fruition is because people didn't want to have to pay a buyer's commission or didn't understand why they absolutely had to do it. So this is, this is like the summary of kind of where it happened is like, so now people are like, okay, well, we need to disclose who's actually paying who. And that's one of the, the settlements is that, you know, they want to try to have the listing agreement show that, okay, if you hire me at 5%, it's got to be written down that 2.5% goes to the listing agent, 2.5% goes to the buyer's agent. On our listing agreements, we've always done what our commission breakdown is on the listing agreement. But you know, a lot of people don't. And I think that's where the frustration came from, from this lawsuit is that there's just kind of like this, this kind of unwritten rule that you're giving it out and sellers were kind of fed up with it. And, and they started this lawsuit. You know, one of the other things they want to say is that buyer's agents can't say they work for free. So, you know, a big saying was like, always like, Hey, I work for free. It doesn't cost you anything to work with me. Right. Uh, you know, Hey, i I've said it before. If you're watching this podcast, you're one of my clients, you probably heard me say it. I a hundred percent said it because technically you kind of don't really because the selling agents, the one that's paying out the commission. Okay. So now what they're saying is like, Hey, listen, you're not technically, nobody's technically working for free. Like, yes, the seller's paying you, but you're getting paid. You're not, not working for free. Like you're getting paid. So, you know, I, I think I also, me, myself, as long as probably every other realtor I know, kind of fell into the kind of little bit of niche of, of saying that when we probably shouldn't have said that. And that's that's something that they want to make sure that you're not saying anymore. And a lot of people are now uh, wondering, are we going to see a lot more buyer agreements going out? So essentially, I know buyer agreements, and uh, back it up, what is a buyer agreement? So essentially, you have listing agreements. When you list the property, I know in Illinois, you have to have a listing agreement signed with a date on it. That's, that's a really big thing. Uh, but they're essentially saying that like now you need uh buyer agreements, meaning that if you're working with me 
and you're my buyer, we have to have a signed agreement saying that, hey, you're going to pay me, you know, X amount of money no matter what. And that's a big thing that they want to start having out there. So there's more disclosure, how payments actually working. The best way to kind of look at this is it's a, it's a big disclosure thing, right? You know, they want people and the general public to know what realtors are making on the buy side, which has never been publicly displayed. And honestly, in the, for the past, like, year now, Redfin, Zillow, Realtor, all the big companies show that like, hey, there's a buyer's agent commission going out. So buyers can know about it. Uh, I personally just don't see it being a big thing because like, I, I don't know, I, most people know that there's money going out and what it is. But, you know, I, I guess there's a, a large population that is not really aware of it. And what they're trying by this lawsuit to accomplish is putting out there that, you know, buyer's agents are getting paid. Which leads us to, you know, will buyers have to start paying commissions? You know, it's possible. I mean, uh, the NAR, the National Association of Realtors, just kind of like came uh, up with a, a rule. So before, to list the property on the MLS, you had to offer some sort of cooperating commission. Okay, so like, you know, you had to give something else out, you know, money out to a buyer's agent in order to get a buyer's commission or uh, to be listed. And you had to offer something. Now, NAR are saying that you are allowed to offer $0 to a buyer's agent, okay? So that is going to mean that there's going to be a lot of properties that are going to be listed and they're not going to be offering the buyer's agent anything. So when we talk about will the buyer's agent have to start paying their agent, yeah, I'm sure it's going to happen. I've seen a few properties in our MLS where they're giving out $0. I believe my time is worth something. I, I get it. A lot of people out there think I'm a, a low-life loser and my time's worth nothing. Uh, but I do believe my time is worth something. So if I'm getting paid $0 to do what could end up being six, seven, eight months worth of work and I'm paying my staff, you know, I'm paying you know myself to work, I'm missing seeing my children go up. I, I think that's worth something. I don't think that's worth zero dollars. And in fact, I also think that because I'm spending time and time is more important than money because you'll never get your time back. You can always get money back. I don't really think that it's, it's, it's my responsibility to pay you money, time, and give you advice and, and get nothing in return. Uh, so yeah, I think if there's going to be zero dollars compensated, you know, we are going to have conversations with our buyers of what we expect to get paid. And if they're not willing to pay us, well, I mean, like we're just not going to work with them. Uh, and I don't mean that in a rude way by any means. I, I, I really, I'm not saying that in a rude way. I'm just saying that like, just like anybody out there that's watching this, you know, you go to your job and you, you do your job at the end of the day, you expect to get paid. I, I think we, we expect the same thing. And I'm not, I don't want more than what we're supposed to be getting. I'm not trying to be greedy about it. I just want what we normally have gotten in the past. Will buyers agents want to work with sellers who don't offer commission? I mean, not really. I, I don't like if the seller's agent's not willing to pay us any money and the buyer's age, our buyers isn't going to pay us any money. Like why? Would, I mean, I don't know why anybody would want to work in that situation. Now, you know, I'm not saying I'm not going to show it. I'm not going to say I'm not going to do it. But again, I think it's going to be harder. What people forget is that like in most of America right now, like 95% of America, it's a hardcore seller's market. Okay. So properties are flying off the market and inventory is like almost at historic lows, although it's building. Okay. Like I work in downtown Chicago. Like let's look at the million and a half plus market. Okay. So above a million and a half dollars, you got 20 months of inventory. Okay. 20 months of inventory. You can't give these things away. Every seller is offering bonuses. I mean, I'm, I'm, I've seen no joke, 100 thousand dollar broker bonuses. I've seen sellers. I have seen sellers offering 100,000 bucks to sell their property. That's how desperate some sellers are to sell. So this whole thing stemmed from the last couple of years, the market's been really hot and some properties have sold really quick and they're, they're mad they had to pay a buyer's agent. This is why I know this isn't going to be a big deal is because in the long run, when it takes you a while to sell a property and you're giving out zero dollars in commission to a buyer's agent, the likelihood of you selling when you got 20 months of inventory is going to be, it's going to take that, make it even harder. Okay. Cause now you're essentially selling by owner and like, you just have to do it. Now I'm not steering anybody away. I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm just putting this in and, and just like, think about it like a business. There's 10 houses on the market. Nine of them are offering a buyer's commission. One's not, you know, you got, they're all pretty much the same place at the same price. Which one's going to be the hardest one to sell? That's it. So yeah, I, I think I think it's going to be tough because now you know the buyer on one of them has to pay their buyer's agent a commission to buy it, and on nine of them they don't. So yeah, I think it's going to be tougher to sell when you offer nothing out. I'm not saying you can't do it because that would be illegal. I'm not saying you can't do it. I, you, by all means, if you want to sell it for zero dollars, go ahead. Doesn't matter to me. 
I'm just saying the question is, do I think it's going to be harder and the seller agents going to be less apt to show it? Probably. Uh, will this hurt the sales for sellers and listing agents who don't offer commissions? Um, you know, I, I, I just think it's going to be a trickier sell, personally speaking, because ultimately it's going to end up costing the buyer more money, right? So if you've got two properties that are listed the same and one he's got to pay commission and one he, they don't, yeah, I mean, again, we're, I'm not saying that people aren't going to want to work with it. That's not what I'm saying. So just in case somebody like, you know, looks at me and is like, we got to get this guy in trouble. He's saying they're not going to work with it. No. The question is, do I think it's going to be more difficult? Yeah. I mean, one, the guy's got to pay more money. It's essentially saying, you know, if you get two of the same property, one's $10,000 cheaper than the other one and all other things are create, uh, equal, what do you think is going to be the uh, easier sell? Well, the cheaper one's going to be the easier sell. And that's essentially what it is. The one's going to be cheaper. If I'm a buyer, what's going to be different for me when buying a house with this new lawsuit? Uh, in all honesty, you, you're going to be, if anything, I think it's more beneficial right now. You're going to be, have more disclosure, what the commission is that's going out to your agent. Uh, and two, you're probably going to have to sign a buyer's agreement stating that, you know, you have allegiance to your agent. That's it. It's not really going to change much. Okay. Like there's, there's like the, the world's not ending, you know, realtors aren't not going to exist. You know, it's just that like, there's going to be a little bit more disclosure. And for consumers, I think that's a good thing. I think it's a good thing that you're actually going to kind of know how the whole system works, which for some reason, a lot of people try to hide this. Will this cause problems in deals? Um, I think when agents aren't involved, I know the deals are much tougher. Okay. Uh, real estate agents have existed for a while. I get it. There's a lot of people out there that hate realtors. I'm sure when we do a little short and we put this up is, do you like realtors? And people are like, they're scumbags. I hate them. Yeah. Listen, there's a lot of shitty agents out there. I also hate a lot of agents too. Okay. But there's also a lot of really good agents out there. There's a lot of people who actually really care about their job, do their research, crush it, make sure that you and your best interests are put forward at the best that they can be to make sure that you make the right decision. But I also think there's a lot of crappy agents out there. And if you've only ran into like three crap, especially in the last couple of years, you know, there's so many realtors got in the business. Nobody knows what they're doing. It's a blind leading the blind. And then that's the only experience you had. And you're like, well, I hate realtors. I, I see your point of view out there. Okay, Mr. Consumer, I see it. I could see why you don't like agents because you had a bad experience. Just like me, if I had a bad experience at a restaurant, you know, and I don't have the best food, I might not go back to that restaurant again. Okay. And that's the way realtors have to think about it. when realtors get upset. Like, I can't believe people hate us. It's like, well, you know, like, I mean, I could see why some people could hate us. I really can. I mean, there's a lot of bad agents out there. So, but you know, the cream, uh, you know, the cream of the crop rise to the top, you know, and it's because like the best of the best that are out there give the best customer service and make sure that you're getting your best needs met. And if none of these people are involved, yeah, it's going to cause problem deals because it's going to essentially just be a buyer that doesn't know what they're doing, a seller that doesn't know what they're doing. Neither party may have ever bought or sold before. And they're working together with nobody in between to help them out. And you, you're going to be like, well, I got an attorney that's going to help. Yeah. Does anybody ever see what a good attorney charges an hour? Like you think attorney's fees aren't going to go way up over this? You're crazy. You think they're not going to charge you like a couple grand extra on top of what they're already making on this? Like, let's, let's be honest here. Will the sales prices drop if buyer's commissions go away? No, actually I don't because here's the thing is that prices are based off of comps or in some states, price per square foot. So let's, let's put this in perspective, guys. Let's, you know, take the buyer's commissions out of it, right? You're selling your property. Your neighbor sells at $500,000, okay? Your neighbor sells at $500,000. Are you now going to list yours at four eighty five? dollars Because you'd be like, well, I'm not paying a buyer's agent commission. Are you going to do that? Anybody that sits here right now and tells me they're going to list it for $15,000 less than what their neighbor listed it for because they've heard about this buyer's agent thing and they're not going to pay it out is full of shit. You're going to list it for more money than that $500,000. So no, it's not going to do anything for sellers. If anything, buyers, this is the thing I don't understand about the whole DOJ case. The, the, the whole thing is like protection for, for buyers. If anything, the buyer is going to pay more money for the same place and have no representation. So who's this really work for? This whole lawsuit works better for sellers. That's it. This is a huge seller's favored agreement. So Redfin left NAR. So NAR is National Association of Realtors. It's essentially like our boss. You know, I, a lot of realtors out there are like, oh, I hate NAR. I think you're an idiot if you hate NAR. And the reason I think you're an idiot, because again, I'm not saying like there's not, like they haven't messed up or they're, I'm not saying they're perfect. Okay. It's like, I don't think our government's perfect, but I'm not leaving the country. Okay. NAR is like essentially our government that rules us. Do they do stupid shit? Have they made some, you know, bad decisions lately? Sure. Redfin left them and they're claiming like, ah, oh, the sexual misconduct case and all this other stuff. We don't like why they did it. They left. No. My opinion, Redfin left because they, you know, they're not making any money, okay? So it's a good way to save money. And now people are like, well, if Redfin leaves, is everybody else going to leave? And by the time this comes out, maybe a lot of other people do leave. But I think people leaving the NAR is an absolute joke. You know, NAR helps agents out, okay? Without NAR, we don't have a code of ethics. You guys know what a code of ethics is? 
that's discrimination, okay? So you want to talk about legal discriminations, racist comments, like saying that you don't want to work with somebody because of X? You could do that now if you're not a member of NAR, and I can't get sued, right? There's fair housing rights out there, right? But I mean, like, most of the fair housing rights are backed by NAR. You could bring me to a lawsuit against a judge. I mean, that's going to be a pretty hard win. I don't have a code of ethics anymore. I'm just selling my property, right? The, the, the code of ethics also helps with commission disputes. You know, I should get paid X because of this. Well, how's, any, how's Redfin going to be able to pay out commissions if they're not realtors, right? I mean, and if all the other companies leave the NAR, it's essentially going to be a free-for-all. There's going to be nobody backing the, the, the code of ethics. There's going to be nobody defending, you know, uh, you know protected classes. There's going to be nobody helping out the consumers in general. It's going to be complete and utter anarchy. So again, the DOJ is ruling on this case saying like, we're doing this for the consumers. What makes most sense out there? Yeah, sellers got to pay some commission out and people got to get paid for doing a job or complete anarchy where there's no ruling governing board over 1.6 million people out there where there's nobody doing anything by the book and everybody just making shit up. Oh, and by the way, you can get your real estate license online in two days. And now this guy can pretty much do whatever the hell he wants, ungoverned, unpoliced to sit there and say, hey, here's how we're going to sell real estate and nobody's going to do anything to me. Is that the best route? Hunt DOJ? Is that the way to say, hey, the uh, consumer's protected? I don't think so. So yeah, I think anybody who's thinking leaving NAR, although it's not a perfect constitution out there, I think we need a form of government. Can people go in there and make NAR better? Of course. Do I think we need NAR? Absolutely. I think anybody that's talking about leaving NAR or saying that realtors are stupid, et cetera, that is a real estate agent, I think is probably an uneducated realtor who does no business, who absolutely has nothing to do and knows nothing about how anything in the industry works, which is why they would be saying that. Anybody who has any class or understands the business in even the slightest knows that the average agent doesn't know anything and we need a ruling governing board to dictate and tell us, hey, there's actually rules you got to follow and if you don't do it, we're going to kick you out of this, okay? Otherwise, we're all out of this and we're not ruled. You guys ever heard any of the history buffs out there? You ever hear anything about the dark ages? Didn't really well end well for humanity, okay? That's essentially what real estate will go back to. It's going to go back to the real estate, but it's going to be the real estate dark ages is what it will be. So yes, we need the NER. What happened before buyer's agents? So this is another good one, guys. So let's essentially talk. This is a big thing. Will buyer's agents become extinct, right? That's a question. People think like, are buyer's agents going to be extinct? You know, buyer's agents came into fruition in recent history. A lot of other countries don't have buyer's agents. So again, when we talk about who's this going to protect, here's how it used to go, guys. Back in the day, okay, 60s, 70s, 80s, you know, you used to go into real estate office. And if you don't believe me, go to my dad's office on the south side of Chicago. You know, he's still got this damn thing listed in the window. And there's a lot of other agent uh, companies in the south side of Chicago that have this. They say it on the thing. They say, come on in for a book of listings, okay? Because there used to be a way that the each office had their own listings and you'd come into the listing. And I'd say, hey, you want the listings out there, Mr. Consumer? No problem. You could get them thousand bucks if you want to hear them. Okay. So then the buyer's like, well, of course I want to see them because you got listings that's different than Remax and Remax has listings that are different sent to one. So yeah, I'm going to pay a thousand dollars to get the book. So now I give you the book. Now you know what my listings are. Okay. And then they had no representation. So like, hey, I want to buy your place. You want to buy my place? It's 400,000. Oh, wait, I have two other people that want to buy my place. How about you give me an extra 20 grand and I'll pick your bid over somebody else's bid? That's how it worked. That's legitimately how it worked. Each office had their own listings. They were not shared, okay? They weren't shared. And you would have to fight. You'd have to pay money to get the listings. Then you'd have to fight for the listings. And then you'd have to pay extra to make sure that your bidding was done. And there was no disclosure. There was no, you know, nobody telling you what was wrong or right. And that's how it went. And now I know a lot of people out there are like, well, Matt, we got the internet now. We could look online. Sure. Okay. Well, the MLS came along to try to make sure that everything was streamlined, that everybody had full access to the full database out there. And there was full disclosure of all the listings that were out there. And yes, buyer's agents got paid to do work to help you buy a property. Okay. I think the system, although it may not be perfect, I think it's as good as it can possibly get. Okay. Now what they're saying to do is like, okay, let's get rid of buyer's agents. And you out there is going to tell me, well, Matt, I could go on Redfin or Zillow and find anything. Great. Sure. You can find anything. But now if I don't have to give any money out to anybody, why am I going to do all this work and then try to solicit to find buyers for the price I was getting? I'm just going to charge more money as a listing agent. Then when I charge more money for a listing agent, if I'm in a hot market, as everybody thinks it's going to be a hot market forever, I'm just going to say, okay, 
any buyer that comes to me, I'm going to charge you extra money to pick yours over somebody else's. You think that's not going to happen out there, Mr. Consumers? You think that if I got 10 offers on a listing of mine, then I'm not going to go to two other people and be like, listen, who's going to give me an extra 20 grand that wants it? Somebody's going to give me 20 grand extra. So now I'm going to make more money on the list side, okay? And then I'm going to make more money because I'm just going to overcharge buyers to give me money to pick my listing. How is that working out well for anybody? And if you think that that's not going to happen, if this gets passed and this gets done, you are freaking crazy. You are crazy because now you're going against unpoliced agents who can do whatever they want, no holds bars. And that's what the DOJ and the consumers out there that are, are, are suing these people are asking for. And you say, Matt, that's not what it really is. No, that's exactly what it is. Because I don't have any art. I don't have to go to them, right? So I don't have to follow any rules. I just have to follow the rules that my sellers like, get me the most money. I don't care what else happens. And as long as I got a listing agreement signed with the amount of money I'm getting paid, I don't have to do anything else. I'm just doing my job. My job is to sell the property. I'm getting paid X amount of money. That's, all, that's the only commitment I have. That's it. So who's getting screwed here? Sounds like the buyers and the general public's getting screwed. So how's this working out for anybody? People aren't actually thinking about what this is actually doing. All people are out there are thinking is like, oh, I hate buyers agents. They get paid money. Guys, guess what? There's a lot of people out there that get paid money to do nothing. You know, I could break down the medical industry. Why does a pill that costs a dollar, okay? This is true, guys. There's cancer pills and stuff out there that cost a buck to make, okay? And then they charge us 5,000 bucks to take that pill, okay? And then there's a $4,000 profit on that. Why are we paying 5,000 when it should be a dollar, okay? Now, I'm not saying that we, we, we should, okay? But that's the way, why are people aren't fighting against that? I don't see every you know, person in the country doing class action lawsuits against this. How many people out there work from nine to five and at some point during their nine to five, they go on Facebook or check their personal email? That's technically stealing because you're going on somebody, uh, you're doing something personal on somebody else's time. That, that is technically, I could break down any job. I li- you could tell me any job. And I could break it down and tell you why those people get paid. How about traders? Traders make the most money in the world. A trader makes money by taking your money and trading it to somebody else, and then they take a cut of it. They're sitting in their underwear doing it 99% of the time. Those are the richest people in the world. The world. They're sitting in their underwear just playing with their money. Pretty much playing. They're gambling. And you're getting, who, why is there no protests in the streets about traders? So again, guys, like it's it, it just, the whole thing boggles my mind because I, my personal theory on this is that real estate is a very residential real estate is a very emotional decision. And when it's your actual money going out, you get very upset when you find out that somebody else profits from it. But guess what? People profit from every single thing that you do in the world. I'm drinking a cup of coffee from Starbucks right now. Okay. I just paid $5 and 23 cents for a medium coffee with two pumps of uh, sugar-free vanilla and almond milk. (sighs) It's delicious. You think this costs Starbucks $5 and 23 cents to make? I bet you this costs Starbucks less than five cents to make. Okay. Which means that I paid $5 and 20 cents more than it should. Now I'm making two and a half percent sometimes on buyer's commission. Okay. This is making 50,000 times as much profit. Where's the anarchy? Where's the outrage? Okay. So again, when we talk about why this all created, it started because people just don't want to pay money. That's the world, way the world works. As of right now, as of right now, that could change. We live in a capitalist society. People are going to make money by doing things. I get it. It's upsetting. I do. And I get it that it's upsetting that there was no disclosure in some cases, which I do think is a good thing that they're trying to fix. But by saying they're going to eliminate real estate agents and by saying that they're going to eliminate buyer's agents, I, don't, I just don't believe it. I could be wrong. I just don't think so. I've been around too many transactions. I've been doing the most transactions in Chicago for the last God knows how many years. And I can tell you right now, buyers don't know left from right. You know, I, I remember whenever I buy places in areas that I don't know, I call a local real estate agent up because I'm like, what am I missing? Why is this one so much more than the next one? And the local real estate agent tells me why it is. And I'm like, oh, heck, I'm glad you told me that. I would have never known that. But now we're going to have buyers run around just saying like, hey, this kitchen looks cool. So this is what I'm going to buy. That's what all the tech companies want to do. They're like, hey, everybody's just going to buy based off kitchens and, and, and um, you know, uh, the way the bathrooms look. But nobody cares about schools or why different locations trade for different uh, rates and you know what makes one place better than another. None of that matters. All that matters is the kitchen or bathroom you like. And that's what tech companies are trying to teach you that where it's going to go. Now, I'm not saying that technology is not going to cut out a lot of real estate agents. And I'm not telling you that this buyer's commission thing is not going to cut out a lot of real estate agents. But the people who actually know what they're doing, care about their job and are, are good, I actually think, again, call me crazy, but I actually think that 
the bigger agencies business will get bigger because people will be more selective and more willing to work with people who actually know what they're doing. And it's just going to weed out the the worst agents. And if we got, you know, 20 some odd thousand agents in Chicago, we're going to go down to maybe 14,000 agents. But guess what? All the agents we lost aren't any good. So when people say, Hey, I hear a lot of agents are leaving the area uh, industry. It's like, well, you know, a lot of the agents that are leaving the industry are people who probably shouldn't have been agents in the first place. A couple other quick things. Uh, do I think it's going to cause issues with misrepresentation? I mean, yeah, we've talked about this. I mean, I couldn't describe how much more the misrepresentation. It's going to be, I, I do think it's going to be the real estate dark ages if this, if, if like agents go away, like especially like buyer's agents. Because the seller agent, I think right now, I'm hands down got the most closed listings in the city. Okay. So as somebody who has the biggest mark share on listings, now there's a guy that has more closed listings, uh, has less closed listings than me, but for a higher dollar amount. So I'm not going to sit there and say I'm beating in every category, but we're talking about number of units sold. So uh, as a guy that has a huge market share on that, like I'm just going to charge more money. If I don't have to pay a buyer's agent commission out and I'm doing extra work and I know I'm going to field more questions, I'm, I'm going to charge an extra percent. And you know what? Sellers are going to be happy to pay it to me. I guarantee you sellers will be happy to pay it to me. And now we're not going to pay a buyer's agent. Now there's no buyer's agent. Now I'm more profitable and I'm going to make more money throughout this whole thing, but the, the consumer is losing. So as somebody, now also, I think it's important to point out guys that if this, if buyer's agent stuff like that go away, I, I'm dead serious. I'm positive that I'll gain more market share and I'll make more money. So on, on a selfish aspect, I should be pushing this because I, I'll, make, I'll crush it. I'll make way more money than I'm making today. But as a person who actually cares about humanity, as raw and weird of a personality as I have, I actually am an ethical guy. And I'm by the book guy. I'm fucked up. I'm not going to deny that. Am I crazy? Absolutely. But am I a by the book and for the people type of person? You're goddamn right I am. And I think this is bullshit that they think they're going to pass something like this and that they're, they're, they're hovering the wool over your eyes that this is good for the consumer because I'm telling you right now, as a guy that's in the trenches, I am patent on the front lines. I know which way the wind is blowing in this battle. It is going to be terrible for the consumer and the consumer is going to lose and people like me are just going to get richer. So you better believe that we need buyer's agents because it was terrible before they existed, it's terrible in all the other countries that don't have them. So we definitely need them. What does this mean for the future of real estate? I think every single year, people tell me why realtors won't exist. I've used this example before. I'm going to use it again. In the late 90s, during the dot-com era that was coming up, there was this website called ForSaleByOwner.com that came to fruition. And you know, most real estate agents uh, companies didn't adapt. Okay, they didn't really exist. Nobody, nobody really believed in the internet at that time. People didn't think it would come on your phone. And people said, "Hey, this for sale by owner.com. This is going to be the future. This is going to be the nail in the coffin to eliminate realtors." Because let me tell you something: people have wanted to eliminate realtors since the dawn of time. We're like cockroaches; we just keep coming back. And I'll tell you right now that for sale by owner.com failed and it failed miserably because people realized that they do not trust nor do they want to buy directly from a consumer without any help. Okay. And great fact, the guy that created for sale by owner.com used an agent to sell his place. And the reason is, is because he knew he needed a realtor to get it done. So the future of realtor may look rough. It may look bleak for a lot of people out there. And for anybody that's watching this, just know that the strong will always survive and that this is just, a, to me, this is a good thing stating that now we just have to be a little bit more upfront with disclosure of what buyer's agent is getting paid. And for consumers out there, you should know that, hey, nothing, in my opinion, for the future of it, long term, I don't think anything is going to change other than the fact that you're going to feel a little bit better about knowing who's getting paid what, and you could go to bed easier knowing that, hey, if I go here, I know that this guy's making X, and that's it. For everybody out there that's got questions about this bombshell lawsuit case out there, what's happening with NAR, comment on it. Leave me a message. I'll be happy to comment on it. You think I'm crazy, wrong, and an idiot? Let me know. I don't care. You know, I'm out here putting it out there of what I feel. If you feel differently, let me know. Thanks for listening to Literacy Life.